Let the man you can race the walk right now. <laughs> on our football, ABC is in town as the Scarlet Knights step onto college football's biggest stage. And we will stop by Edison, New Jersey for a look at the Kyle Flood Show. Finally, the second part to the Keith Lumpkin story. So grab your favorite bobblehead and get ready. Our football is next. You're watching our football. Let's go! Every day is a battle, a battle we embrace, a fight that we will win, a future that we are ready for. Every player is a dreamer, a believer, a leader, our coach, a true teacher, true mentor, true friend. The stronger family won tonight. Why did I choose this special place? Because it is home. It is on the rise. It is family. It is the definition of hard work. Rutgers is about momentum. It's going to be exciting. You want to pick the wrong day. You play Rutgers football. Who will we become? What will we do after we graduate? Whatever we want to do, we will be ready for any field. Our football is brought to you by AmeriHealth New Jersey, the exclusive health insurance partner of Rutgers Athletics. For health insurance that pays, it's AmeriHealth New Jersey. I did not. <laughs> I'd say it's fairly accurate. <laughs> Hell, it is. That's the Indiana, Indiana newspaper. Somebody wrote. Scarlet. <laughs> Uh, welcome inside Quaker Steak and Lube here in Edison, New Jersey. This is the Kyle Flood Show. Mark Malus is filling in for the voice of the Scarlet Knights, Chris Carlin, Eric Legrand, Rutgers head coach Kyle Flood. Coach, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well, Mark. I appreciate you being here, filling My in. My pleasure. Chris. Big night for the Mets. Yes. As well as our radio show here, so we understand why Chris can't be here. Uh, but it's great to have you here, and it's uh, an exciting week for our program. I mean, an unbelievable. Unbelievable comeback victory against Indiana. When that one went final, Coach, what were the things? Some of the things that were running through your mind? Uh, you know, it's 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 hard to describe. Although I did see a replay where at one point I was I was smiling as I looked at the field. So <laughs> I, I know that it felt good, and um, and I, I couldn't be more proud of the team. Uh, how hard they fought. Uh, I thought we played well in the first half to get a lead right before the half. Uh, didn't execute very well in the third quarter. That's for sure. But. We're, we're tough enough mentally to continue to play, to continue to learn through the game, and, and ultimately come out on top. And, and it was a, a tremendous effort by the team. But your team continued to fight. Shows you a lot of character about your team. Yeah, I, I, agree, I agree with that. I, I totally believe that. And, and especially by the defense. You know, the defense gives up four touchdowns in the third quarter. 
and, and then throws a shutout in the fourth quarter. You know, just a tremendous job by them of finishing the game. And uh, I know this was on, uh, they showed a video from the locker room, but this is what I, you know, what I said to the team before we played the game. I wanted to start fast. I thought we did. I wanted them to stay together because I knew it was going to be a hostile environment. It's one of the better environments of the year in Bloomington for homecoming. It was a great environment for college football out there. And, and then we had to finish. And that was really Gary Brackett's message to the team the night before. Gary gave the team a great talk. It was the second time since I've been the head coach that Gary's spoken to the team before a game. Okay. Uh, just in case anybody's keeping score, Gary's 2-0 and right now. <laughs> because Gary spoke to the team before the, uh, the 2012 Cincinnati game that we won 10-3. to uh, So Gary has won uh, a low-scoring game, and he's won a shootout. So he's, he seems to be good for all occasions. Uh, but his message was about finishing. And I thought it was a great message to the team and, and certainly one that we needed on, on Saturday. How you doing, Mike? Hey, guys. Coach, that was a heck of an ending to that game. Almost as exciting as the Maryland comeback last year. Which one did you like? Uh, Coach, I have a question. You know what? I guess the one that we just had because it's pressure in <laughs> my memory. <laughs> hey, the, the best part of a game like that is watching the players. Yeah. And I always try to do that. I always try to take a moment and just watch them celebrate uh, because they work so hard all year long. You have only guaranteed 12 opportunities. And when you come from behind, it's, it, that's a special day. That, that's a day that they're going to have to be able to take with them the rest of their lives. Uh, and they deserve the opportunity to enjoy it until we get back to New Jersey. Then we got to get back to work. <laughs> and I think, I think they did a good job of that this week. We've had a good week so far. As good. coach, as you and I both know, the real parties in the locker room after the game. <laughs> no question. Like, what, what was it like in the locker room after the game? You know, I used, E. Fall started it with the chance, and then he kind of passed it along to me. I used to get everyone all amped up after the game, but we may need to bring part? you in and pass that I, chance. I, I, I know. We need to do that. Somebody got you got to pass the yeah. torch off now, coach. I, know. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. There is. What's it like in there after? There is. I, I, I've said this to the team before. There is no better place in the world than the locker room after a win. And it, it's it, it's what keeps guys like me coaching 22 years now. It's what keeps the players coming back every week. Uh, it's, there's nothing like it in the world. Coach, tremendous studio audience here at Quaker Thank State. you, everybody, for coming out. Coach, good luck Saturday night. I appreciate good luck, that, Mark. You got it, Thank Coach. You. Good luck, e, Coach. Thank you. For Coach Goffman, Eric Legrand. We'll see you all out there at Piscataway High Point Solutions Stadium Saturday night as the Scarlet Knights entertain the Ohio State Buckeyes. Thanks to everyone here at Quaker State and Loop. Have a great night, everyone. All right. Be early and be loud. Yeah. How did I do, gorgeous? Nice job. I appreciate it. Love Thank it. you. Have a, have a ball. Thank you. We'll do it again. <laughs> you know, his name is Kyle, too. Is it really? Hey, when I was your age, there were no Kyles. I was the only one. <laughs> That's the truth. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you for coming. We're watching Orange Football. The following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. to college football's birthplace and Saturday Night Football on ABC. The opportunity to play in the Big Ten assures you every year uh, that you're going to play against the nation's best players, uh, the nation's best coaches. Uh, that's exciting for us. Uh, the difference at Rutgers is we get to do that on the biggest stage. We get to do that in the number one media market in the world. Uh, and when you perform in the number one media market in the world, uh, that, that stays with you really for the rest of your life and if that means you move on to the nfl well you're, you're playing on the same kind of stage that you'll play on in the nfl if you move into another stage of your life maybe to wall street you're certainly not going to play or have to operate in a in a higher pressure environment than you will right here at Rutgers. You know, when we come out of the tunnel for warm-ups and they're in the stands and they're cheering us on it's an emotional lift to everybody on our team and then ultimately when we come out to start the game uh, we know it's going to be electric, so you know our student section has done a great job all year. Yeah. I know that they're going to be ready. Uh, I know the fans are going to be outside getting ready for the game, uh, but we want you in there early cheering us on, and, and I promise you it makes a difference.
you ever felt so attached to someone that it feels like you share a pulse? You see, that is how we feel about you. It is you that makes homecoming so sweet. It is you who propels us for one last play. It is the night pulse that we all share. A connection that is shared with everyone in the state of Rutgers. It's day one, since 06, baby. Since Brian Leonard was leaping. Leonard leaping, baby. Let's go, Rutgers. Come on, baby. Let's go. From the student section, to the alumni, to the future Scarlet Knights. You all make this place feel like home. You are always there to greet us when we return. You are always there when we need you most. For that, we want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For that, we want to say thank you. Our football is brought to you by AmeriHealth New Jersey, the exclusive health insurance partner of Rutgers Athletics. For health insurance that pays, it's AmeriHealth New Jersey. Ricky and the video crew, oh, they're, uh, <laughs> they're my guys, they're really cool people. You know, they do a great job. A lot of people would just overlook all the hard work they put into. Yeah, that video department is really like one of the major organs uh, in, in, our, in our body as a football program. Uh, Ricky makes sure that, you know, whatever we need is on the iPad. So he's, he's been really helpful uh, for us as quarterbacks. Uh, they probably the best in the country at what they do. And they make sure they stay on top of everything. Anything you need, you can go to them and they'll help you out with whether it's your iPads or your, something's wrong with the computers, you know, they're always there, first first response, and uh, they do a good job. They're not a group that gets seen very often, uh, but they're world class at what they do. All the guys who ran tapes last year were filming on Monday, and it was by far the smoothest practice we've had all year. Huge, huge question marks on the depth chart right now. We've got the best video guys in the world, from Ricky to Alex, man. I think I think they just do a great job. Remember, per perfect practice today. Ricky does a great job with the film. Alex does a great job with the music before practice, always giving me the little Macklemore shout out, so I really appreciate that. We see the highlight film for the game coming up the next day, and it really gives everybody an extra boost. So much of what they do allows the coaches and the players to do what we do on a day-in and day-out basis. And Ricky brings many years of NFL experience uh, to our program working in, in different video departments in the NFL. And he's an invaluable piece uh, of our puzzle here.
Our football is brought to you by AmeriHealth New Jersey, the exclusive health insurance partner of Rutgers Athletics. For health insurance that pays, it's AmeriHealth New Jersey. Keith is a is a fun guy for me to watch. You know, somebody that I recruited when I was the offensive line coach. When he started high school, probably thought he was going to be a basketball player. And as high school went on, you know, Coach Hansen and the staff at St. Peter's did a great job of, of changing him and transforming him into what was going to be a college football player. And I've gotten a chance to continue that transformation here at Rutgers. Right there in the back, that was the Del Barton game. First time suiting up as a, a freshman on the varsity. You know, it was very exciting. I was a little nervous that they were supposed to put me in the game. Obviously, I was only 15 years old. A very talented football player. You know, a guy who's going to be a three-year starter at left tackle in major college football. Remember the last time I put mine down against uh, Gary Nova and Don Bosco, my senior year. Last time I wore that helmet. And now, it's very easy for me to say, yeah, there's no doubt he's a football player. I care about your grandson, and I'm going to try my best to get him into the man that you want him to be. I liked him from then on. He was okay with me. St. Peter's Prep is one of the most, you know, prestige high school with academics. And since that was my parents' focus, you know, going to Rutgers, uh, they felt that, you know, that was one of the best decisions I could make academic-wise. My son is a mama's boy, and he's to be the first to tell you he wanted to stay home so that his mother could come to all his football games. <laughs> There's no better feeling than lining up, going out there, and you turn around, you see your mother and father and your whole family and friends there to watch you play. I can go to every game. I wouldn't miss too many games. You know, I made every game so far except for two. I got chopped today. <laughs> but I knew that way I can come to all the home games. I see him on the big screen, I'm like, 74, yay! <laughs> uh, I really, I do, I like it. I really enjoy the uh, whole, from start to finish, every part of the game. This is my grandfather. This is my grandfather, you know, he's the one who got me into playing football and taught me everything I know from the ground up. This is some of my little cousins. This is my niece right here, my other niece. My little cousin, these are two young football stars right here. Over here, you got some barbecue chicken. Got some macaroni and cheese in this one. Listen, being an offensive lineman, you gotta know how to eat in a little while, give it some time to burn. This is mostly my mother's side of family right here. You got my older brother, Michael, Ma, Angie, my cousin, Tisha. These are my lovely grandmothers over here. They're enjoying their meals. <laughs> when I come home, play with the kids. Oh! I just can't wait to be king. That's all I got for you. There's two reasons I'm happy. One reason is because Rutgers is a very good university to get a degree at. So primarily, that, that's the number one reason. But from a football perspective, he, he grew up going to the Rutgers games, watching the Rutgers games. So it was just like being home. It really helped him um, work hard without being supervised and and he had to really learn to um, do things on his own and accept the responsibility of schoolwork and football and he's a really hard worker and he really embraced that and we couldn't be more proud of the effort he's put in uh, because he's worked so hard to get where he is. Most definitely. He, his um, attitude has changed drastically. He's very much mature now. He's really into the whole family thing and he's first and foremost everything that he does Family, family, family. They definitely have become men. They've grown up, matured, academically, physically. They are men, young men. And actually, our boys share a house together, and you know, it's just, it's just a great opportunity for them to, to live on their own and become adults. Mm -hmm.